Hawks Talk and Squawk. The loony <laughs> J-Dub sister who called herself trying to get the streets involved with me. Let's soar back in time to the summer of 2003. This timeline is from the summer of 2003 through the summer of 2004. Now in the summer of uh, 2003, a new family had came to our came to the West Park congregation. The Harrison family. It was the mother, sister Harrison, her son, Jeffrey Harrison, and the sister Teresa Harrison. They came to our, uh, West Park. It was about the summer of 2003. It wasn't too long after Kenji and his stink breath sidekick Hollow Man came on board. So they came to West Park the summer of 2003. Now, Jeffrey, he was about a month or so younger than me. But he was like real socially awkward and to himself. Like he'd go to work, go to the meetings, field service, and home. He was a homebody. You know, he's in the computers, play video games, watch TV, stuff like that. So I kind of started inviting him out with us, like to shoot hoops. You know, I mean, he wasn't really athletic, but sometimes he'd be an extra body when we would be out there playing basketball and all that. We'd invite him to different J-Dub gatherings and events. With us, and it was always something going on, like in the J Dove stratosphere, as far as socializing. So we invite him out with us. Sometimes he wouldn't be up to it, but it'd be a few times he would roll with us. You know, he was a good guy, real quiet. We'd try to break him out of his shell by introducing him to different sisters, but. You know what I mean? He was a Ford. You know, but... Now, the Harrises had a cousin. A younger cousin. And their younger cousin, she had a thing for me. Now, and I wasn't in the... At this time, I'm 19, 20. She's like 15, 16, so... I'm looking at her like one of the little homies. I'm like, it's not even on that time with us. But I remember the first time she came to visit the congregation, I had already known her from seeing her because they was in our circuit. So we would always see them like her and her family at the circuit assembly. And even at the conventions, you might see her in passing. I never... Paid her no mind, but when she came to visit West Park, I was like, okay, that's your cousin. You know what I mean? We always see her at Turnersville. That's where we went for our circuit assembly at the new assembly hall in Turnersville, New Jersey. Prior to that, we was going up to Buckingham and Buckingham Township about maybe about 25 to 30 minutes outside of Philly. Somewhere like that. It was it was about maybe a 45 minute or an hour drive from where we lived in Winfield. But anyway, at this time, we was going to Turnersville. Turnersville was right over the, uh, you should take the Walt Whitman Bridge and that would take you right over there. That's about maybe 25 minutes to a half hour ride from Winfield. So that was a little closer. So anyway, the first time their little cousin, Katrina, came to uh, visit West Park, we had just so happened to be having a, uh, a cookout later that day. At this time, we was meeting like early on Sundays, like 9.30. So by 1, 2 o'clock, the meeting was done. Those that went out for afternoon witnessing was wrapping up. 
you know, Uncle Sheaf, he was good for throwing last minute cookouts. It'd be like Tuesday and he would spread the word. Like, all right, this Saturday or this Sunday, we're going to go out to the park. And it was This was just like one of those random times that Unc planned the cookout. Because a couple days beforehand, he, my cousin Sheeper told me, he was like, yeah, my pop, he invited like some of the friends out Sunday after the meeting. So I was like, all right, bet ain't got to worry about finding something else to do. It's summertime, you know, them cookouts be hitting. So anyway, Katrina came to visit with her auntie and her cousins, and they came out to the park out there at Belmont Plateau. You know, Katrina was flirting with me the whole time, but like I said, I'm not interested in no young buck. She's just turning 16. I'm damn near 20. I'm like, nah. Like, she was cool. We'd be talking about, like, different rap artists and movie stars. Like, she was cool to conversate with, but it was never on no time like that. But anyway, maybe I I was being a little too friendly with her. And she started taking it the wrong way. But I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just being me, a nice guy. The next thing I know, she starts popping up at West Park quite frequently over the next few months. Over the next few months, at least once or twice a month, she was coming to West Park, whether it was for the Sunday meeting or the uh, the Tuesday. Matter of fact, at the time, we were still meeting on Thursday. But once we switched over... To the new Kingdom Hall at 43rd and Haverford. That's when the Theatratic Ministry School and service meeting switched from Thursday to Tuesday. So she was coming to either the Sunday meeting or the weekday meeting. And she'd be trying to dress all, execute, trying to impress me. Ask me, do I want to go to the movies? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm going, but I'll go, but... I'm bringing the homies too. And she'd be like, it's her treat. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I would invite the homies. And at this time, uh, Lucius, this was right before Lucius started messing with the girl he would eventually marry. Matter of fact, he was kind of talking to her around this time, but it wasn't really official, official yet. So the first time we went to the movies, Lucius was there to kind of run interference with her cousin. You know, so yeah, he was there for that, to run interference with the cousin. And I think Narraj, you know, might have came to in a, another one. Yeah, Narraj was there because Katrina's other friend from her congregation came with her. And during the movie, she was getting all touchy-feely and shit. Trying to kiss me and all of that. And I was like, sis, chill. I mean, like, I'm almost 20 and you a young buck. <laughs> I said, it ain't even like that. And she was like, well... Like, I act older than 16. I said, that ain't the point. <laughs> and she was like, well, I'll be 18 in less than two years. I said, all right, maybe when you turn 18, then maybe I'll holler at you. So, she was like, all right. She would keep trying to make passes. I would keep rejecting that kind of putting it in a place. Now, this was later on that year. This was like maybe around November. Yeah, because I remember basketball season had just started. And she was trying to buy a ticket to come to the game, the Sixers game. 
And she was like, if I buy a ticket, is there any way that we could all sit together? I was like, nah. <laughs> so that squashed that idea. But this is when we had the circuit, brother. This was like, it was like maybe early November. I know it was before uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. But we had the circuit brother and she came to the meeting that Sunday. And you know what I mean? She, she's still flirty or whatever. Then I had another uh, friend that just so happened to be visiting our congregation around that time. You know, this was like one of... Uh, my female J-Dub homies, we hung out often. We, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, she was of age. She was actually a little bit older than me. But she was actually visiting that congregation, our congregation, that same day. And Katrina saw how we were vibing or whatever. And she started getting in her feelings. So a couple of days later... She started texting me all reckless, telling me out. I'm playing with her emotions and don't get it twisted. She's not one of these overly spiritual Jehovah's Witness chicks that she's in touch with uh, ninjas that's deep in the streets and can have me unalived. <laughs> she actually used the word red room. Spell that backwards. So... Of course, I took offense to it. And I'm like, you can't be making no empty threats over here, sis. You know what I mean? Because you still in school and I know what school you go to. And I know people that got people that go to your school. And trust me, you don't want to take it there. I gave her that one and she was like, Whatever, you ain't tough. You a punk like most of these other uh, J-Dub uh, cats that only act tough when they're around. I was like, all right. You know what I mean? I ain't even do nothing at that point. But I nipped it in the bud, told her, don't hit me up no more. And that was this was back with the old cell phones, back when you couldn't block numbers and <laughs> all that shit. So whenever she would... She would still text me a bunch of nonsense. So I was like, all right, I ain't even going to send nobody at it yet. But she kept texting me all types of reckless stuff and calling my phone from a block number. And I knew it was her. So I had my little cousin. My little cousin is the same age as her, just a couple months older. I gave little Cuzzo Katrina's number. Lil Cuzzo hit her up, ran off her address, what school she went to, her parents' names, all of that. I was like, you give my cousin any more problems, don't call his phone, don't text him, don't try to get his home phone number from your cousins that go to his hall, none of that. We had all that shit covered. And Katrina was shook after that. Ain't see her or hear from her for a while. Only time I seen her was at the uh, circuit assembly that came back around that February. That was the uh, the next time I seen her. And she had tried to play real low key that day. But that weekend, this is the topic for another video, but that's the weekend where... <laughs> I got into it with these sisters, these other goofy, crazy sisters and their mom. But like I said, that's another story for another video. But Katrina, she laid low that whole weekend. And the same thing when the district convention came around that summer. She laid low and tried to uh, stay out of sight. But she didn't come back to West Park to visit or none of that. 
And meanwhile, her cousins, they ain't really paying no mind. They ain't really know what was going on because she was told not to say shit about me to her cousins. But anyway, I guess she, after so much time it went by, she figured that everything was sweet. Now, this was around maybe August. And the summer of 2004, amongst my J-Dub circle, is a summer I'm going to do a whole separate video on. Because there's like a lot of shit that went down that summer. So this is already a crazy summer. It was like a brief falling out between me, Sheev, and Nat Raj, and not a falling out on their end, more so a falling out between me and them. It was it was just like a wild summer. It was like some other stuff went on too, but like I said, that's another topic for a later video. But anyway, it was like around August. And I'm home one day. My mom and sister, they was probably out in field service, like a Bible study or whatever. Because by this time, they were studying with some of the cousins on my mom's side. It was like my mom's second cousin and her two daughters. So they would study with them and they would hang out and do all that, whatever. So it was one day I'm home. I'm downstairs. I think it was like one of those rare day, like weekends where I was just chilling. Like I ain't had no plans. It was like one of those days I just wanted to relax, like watch movies or whatever. So I'm chilling. I got the house to myself. You know, my mom's husband lived there, but he stayed in the bedroom. He stayed out the way when he was there. But anyway, the phone ringing. Now, usually, I never answered the house phone because wasn't nobody calling there for me. I just so happened to look at the call ID and pick up the phone, and there's some clown on the other end talking dumb greasy. Like, yeah, uh, I tried to block my number, but I see y'all got call blocked, but it don't matter because shit ain't sweet over here. And I know what your mom and sister look like and the car they be in. And y'all don't want this body just, just running off at the mouth talking dumb greasy. This started mentioning Katrina's name. He was like, Hey, you give my homegirl problems again, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Man, dude, you're a clown. And I got your number. So, now you know I me. Mean? You got people calling the house phone, reciting our address, mentioning my mom and sister by their names, and threatening harm to them. Like, nah, that can't go unpunished. The same cousin... That I had hit her up months earlier. She got with her two sisters. And like seven of their friends. And they rolled up on Katrina. Because Katrina had this little job. Where she worked at every summer. It was like somewhere up there. Not too far from Stanton Avenue. You know what? It was a summer camp. She was a... Uh, Summer camp counselor. I don't know if the camp was at Martin Luther King High or it was somewhere up there in that section of Philly. Like up there somewhere in the Mount Airy section. I had them roll up on Katrina and her other little fast ass friend. And they ain't even beat them up too bad, but. They put them paws on her enough that Katrina knew shit is no longer sweet and that they followed up on those threats and she gave up the person that called my phone and revealed who gave her the number. 
the person that gave him the number was the sister Barbara who went to our congregation. It was real close with my mom. But Katrina tricked her into giving out our home number. Now, usually if somebody requests somebody's number, they usually go back to that individual and ask, is okay that they give that person your number? Or if anything, they ask that person, well, if you want, I'll give such and such your number, have them call you. But no, you just give out our number because Katrina told her that she wanted to play, she wanted to uh, have a gathering and wanted to invite my sister since they was only about a year apart. So that's how she got my number to get to that clown. Now, as far as a clown that was calling, talking all greasy, found out he is actually a J-Dub trying to act tough, but he wasn't nobody of importance. He wasn't part of the what we call the end crowd. The end crowd was consisted of all like the popular J-Dubs in the Philadelphia area that would always be at the gatherings, the bowling and the skating parties and other events like that. Found out he was one of those type J-Dubs, but he was a loser, you know. He was never really at none of the gatherings, but he worked at the movie theater up there at Sheltonham. So, and for this, I ain't even get no real I ain't even get no real G's on him like no G's that would have put him down you know what I mean I got a couple of the homies from the block gave them a couple of, I was like let's just scare this dude real quick so rode up on him he coming out the movie theater this is on a late night it's like 12 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. Roll up on him. I'm like, you know who I am? Yeah. And he, when he heard my voice, he got real shook. He was, he started stuttering like, man, I was just joking. I mean, Katrina really made me think that you was going to do real harm to him. And I was just trying to look out for him. Like, listen here, bruh. This is just a warning. And I turned to my young boy. My young boy Dolph sucker punched the mop. Then my homie Kev followed up. You know what I mean? Gave him a little light working over. I'm like, if you wasn't a fellow J-Dub, the beating would have been way worse than this. Don't you ever in your motherfucking life call my house phone or call me, period, threatening my family. You know what I mean? I don't care what trick puts you up to it. Because if this happens again, there's going to be a local memorial service at your kingdom hall. You hear me? Boy, just lay there all bloody. and You know what I mean? Then, just, just off the strength, I had to turn his pockets into bunny ears. You know what I mean? I didn't even need the $180 he had on him or his little Nokia cell phone. I wound up selling that phone. Matter of fact, I think I gave it to somebody. Just told them to go change the number and service on it. You know what I mean? And that pocket money, I gave the my homies that was with me. But you know what I mean? Just off the strength, had to turn his pockets and the bunny ears and let them know that this shit ain't sweet. But anyway, after that, I never really seen Katrina again after that. As far as her cousins... You know what I mean? Jeffrey still hung out with us here and there. You know what I mean? But that was about it. You know, I just, I was in uh, that area earlier. You know what I mean? Which made me think of all that. But anyway, this was just some Hawks talk to squawk, some throwback J-Dub stories. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more content. Hawk out.